We have previously discussed the Z transform and the discrete time Fourier transform. In this lecture, we discuss how these two transforms are connected and how digital filters affect the phase and magnitude of filtered signals. We have previously learned that if a digital filter's region of convergence includes the unit circle, then the filter will be BIBO stable. The unit circle can be defined by a single function for all z by using polar coordinates. If we evaluate the z-transform at all z with magnitude 1, the z-transform will take this form. As you may recall, this equation is the discrete time Fourier transform. This little exercise tells us that the DTFT of a digital filter exists as an absolutely summable value only if the filter is Bebo stable. Now, let's look at how digital filters affect the phase and magnitude of filter signals in greater depth. We know from the Fourier series that any periodic signal can be expressed as a summation of periodic basis functions like x of n. So if we input a periodic basis function into a filter, the convolution of the two signals will look like this. We can pull an e to the j omega naught n out of the summation to find that y of n will simply equal x of n scaled by the dtft evaluated at omega naught. We can alternatively write this y of n to show that y of n will equal x of n scaled by the magnitude of the frequency response of the filter evaluated at omega naught and then shifted by the phase of the frequency response of the filter evaluated at omega naught. Since we all are more familiar with cosine than a cosine is simply the summation of a pair of complex conjugate e to the j omega naught n's, we can easily show that a filtered cosine will have the same frequency as the original cosine, but its amplitude will be scaled by the magnitude of the frequency response of the filter evaluated omega naught, and its phase will be shifted by the phase of the frequency response of the filter evaluated at omega naught. Suppose we had an input that is the summation of three cosines. If we filter this input with an ideal low-pass filter with magnitude 1, then the magnitude of the two lower frequency cosines would remain the same, but the magnitude of the high frequency cosine would be reduced to zero. So we know that the magnitude of the filter can completely remove frequency content. That's pretty straightforward. But how does the phase affect the output? For an ideal low-pass filter, y of n would equal cosine omega 1n plus cosine omega 2n. More generally, we want our ideal low-pass filter to have zero phase for all frequencies. In order to achieve such a low-pass filter with zero phase, the impulse response would need to be an infinitely long sync function. The ideal low-pass filter would be, need to be non-causal and have an infinite number of delays and advances. Since this is impractical, we will often have to accept an approximation of the ideal low-pass filter. We oftentimes create this approximation by shifting our impulse response to the right by m samples so that the sample at n equals zero will equal zero. By shifting the impulse response, we can maintain the magnitude of the frequency response. But we add a delay of m samples to the output. This uniform delay is caused by the phase of the filter. To obtain a uniform delay of m samples, the filter must have a linear phase with a negative slope of m. In general, we want all of our filters to have this negatively sloped linear phase. If the phase of the filter is nonlinear, then the output of this filter will not resemble the output of the ideal low pass filter because every cosine will be delayed by inconsistent amounts.